is Dr. Aileen Zurbriggen, leader of the American Psychological Association Task Force on the Sexualization of Girls. Thank you for accepting our invitation. For My you. pleasure. Eileen, uh, I'd like to start with a definition of the word sexualization, because uh, here in Poland, uh, I can tell you that uh, it's quite an unknown term still. So could you please briefly explain what does it mean and how should we understand this, this, this word? Yes, uh, the task force came up with a four-part definition to encompass the full range of sexualization. So let me just say a little bit about each part. Mm -hmm. Uh, the first part is if we value someone only for their sexuality, then that is sexualizing, that's sexualization. Uh, so if they're all, only thing we care about them is their, what they are sexually as opposed to uh, their personality, their intelligence, etc. Uh, the second piece is, has to do with what we consider to be sexually attractive. So a person is sexualized if their um, appearance is the most important thing about uh, their sexuality. So uh, only their physical appearance and it's a very narrow standard that they have to meet as well. Mm -hmm. could, you, could you explain what does it mean a narrow standard? So the ideal for sexual beauty for women is incredibly uh, narrow, incredibly hard to achieve. Women have to be very, very thin, uh, very flawless in their skin, uh, very uh, thin hips, large breasts. Al almost impossible, frankly speaking. I exactly. Even the models uh, don't quite meet the standard of perfection, which is why they are photoshopped so frequently. Of course, of course. And then the third component of sexualization is a very important one. Uh, someone is sexualized if they are treated in an objectifying manner when we portray their sexuality. So they're uh, conveyed as a sexual object to be used by others rather than a person in their own right. So that, that's a very important and a very damaging component of sexualization. And then finally, the fourth piece is uh, sexualization happens anytime sexuality is imposed on a person inappropriately. So an example would be if we portray a six-year-old in a sexualizing way, uh, we would say that is inappropriate and that's an example of sexualization. Of course, of course. And tell me, because uh, in, in, in the report that uh, you've created, um, in the name was uh, Girls and Women, Sexualization of Girls and Women. So uh, does sexualization concern only, only girls and women or uh, can also boy and men uh, be sexualized somehow? Uh, boys and men can be sexualized, uh, but we focused on the in the report on girls and women because sexualizing images are so much more prevalent for them. Uh, but we are seeing uh, some sexualizing images of men uh, where this standard for them is uh, a very muscular uh, physical appearance and becoming increasingly hard for them to attain. Uh, but those images are still much less frequent than the sexualizing images of women, which is why we focused on, on girls and women in the report. Of course, okay. And uh, recently I've, uh, I've talked to some friends uh, of mine um, and I've tried to, to explain them about sexualization, what does it mean. And uh, I've, I've met a situation that they uh, connect sexualization with a pornography issue very much. And uh, I'd like to ask you, uh, are these two words uh, explaining the very same phenomenon, or uh, I don't know, maybe maybe it's some some difference between sexualization and pornography? What what do you think? Yeah, well, I think it makes sense that they're making that link. Uh, pornography is a very sexually objectifying, so virtually all pornography portrays women in very narrow ways, uh, definitely as sexual objects. So they're not in the pornography for their own sexual uh, needs. It's it's to be used and consumed by others. So uh, virtually all pornography is an extreme example of sexualization, but sexualization occurs... Not the only one. Exactly. So it occurs outside of pornography as well, and we see it uh, all around us in the media, actually. Of course. So, uh, so sexualization is much wider definition, we would say, Mass, more, I don't know, surrounding us, let's yeah, say. Yes, uh, so sexualization is present far beyond pornography mm -hmm, mm -hmm. in all of the aspects of media and culture that we are exposed to much more frequently. So it's an extreme version in pornography, but present as well throughout uh, culture and, and society. In case of pornography, it's pretty obvious and nobody would uh, argue that it's, it's, it's sexualization, but uh, I guess what's important to uh, tell people that it's not only this kind of sexualization, but also other areas. Exactly, and maybe a little more subtle, a little more difficult to 
to point out, exactly. but present nonetheless. So, so let's go to this to this de detailed uh, mm -hmm. areas because uh, in your report you've uh, stated that sexualization can occur in uh, three areas, and uh, you've named it uh, the contribution by society, interpersonal uh, contribution, and self-sexualization. So let's now uh, talk a little bit about each of them and uh, let's try to wonder how do these uh, spheres relate to each other. Okay. Uh -huh. So the first one was the contribution by society. What does it mean and uh, if you could comment it. Mm -hmm. Sure. So uh, in the report, we reviewed hundreds of studies that have been conducted looking at the presence of objectification and sexualization in the media, uh, the sexualization of women. And uh, a variety of media were examined, television, movies, uh, video games, advertising, music videos. Uh, in virtually all of them, sexual uh, sexually objectifying images of women are very, very common. So we see sexualization of women occurring in virtually all of the media that have been studied. Um, now culture goes beyond just media, so we don't want to just point the finger only at media. Um, and partly uh, the other two spheres talk about that as well. But other ways in which culture is uh, sexualizing to women are in products that are available and some of the concern about the sexualization of girls focuses particularly on products. So clothing uh, for young girls, girls age six to eight, that is really modeled very closely on adult fashions. Uh, for example, padded bras for girls as young as six, that's an inappropriate. So you, you would think that uh, they don't need them yet. <laughs> exactly. So it's it's in a, inappropriate to be marketing those to girls. Of course. Um, and clothing as well. And a recent study has shown that uh, the uh, fashions that are available to girls in the U.S. are uh, they have childlike elements, but they also have adult sexualized elements mm. to the clothing. So exposing midriffs and uh, leopard print or animal print. Um, uh, patterns that are often mm -hmm. associated with sexuality mm -hmm. in adult mm -hmm. women. So is it a kind of, uh, I don't know, preparing consumer for, for later being, uh, I don't know, active on the market to buy more and more and more? Yeah, potentially. And that may be one reason why um, beauty products are marketed to very young girls now. So mm -hmm. uh, lipstick or, you know, pre-lipstick uh, mm -hmm. to six-year-olds. Pre-pre-pre-lipstick. Pre <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, and so get, getting them to learn early that these are products that they're going to have to buy for the rest of their life in mm. order to be an attractive and sexy woman. Of course, of course. Okay, so uh, mm, the second, uh, second area was interpersonal contribution. What is that right. area? The, so the interpersonal contribution refers to any time that a person in a girl's life either treats her in a sexualizing way or communicates to her that she should be focused mostly on her sexuality. So, for example, if teachers uh, comment unfavorably about fat girls and indicate that they should all be thinner or prettier, or parents who focus mostly on attractiveness or praise their child mostly, their girl mostly for how pretty she is. Kind of conditioned love, I guess. Kind of, yeah. Um, an extreme example of that would be the beauty pageants for very young girls uh, where they're uh, very sexualized as well and, and dressed up to look as um, to look like older um, adult mm -hmm. sexy women of course and then of course peers are a very important um, element of interpersonal sexualization as well and we see this uh, in schools when uh, sexually objectifying comments are made about girls when they're starting to develop, um, when they hit puberty. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And these actually are a form of sexual harassment where girls' uh, attention is focused on their body and their sexuality when really in school you'd like kids to be focused on learning and um, getting uh, an education. Mm. And it's especially hard because uh, teenagers are very peers oriented and they, they want to be liked by others so it's very damaging I guess. It, it is, it's a very vulnerable time, you're right. Uh, it's, a, it's a point when developmentally uh, children are, teens are um, they're learning how to be part of a group and being part of their peer group is very, very important to them psychologically. 
So to have a standard for acceptance that focuses on a damaging component is, is unhealthy and un unfortunate. Yes, and it, uh, and, and it leads us to the to, to third area, which is self-sexualization. Uh, so probably uh, I, we could say that a, a result of this previous two one. So uh, after, after this culture and this interpersonal contribution, then you become to think about yourself Exactly, exactly. That's exactly what happens. Uh, girls internalize the messages that they receive from the culture and from other people, and they begin to think of themselves as a sexual object, and they begin to uh, act in ways uh, that uh, focus on their sexuality. So they dress in certain ways. They might uh, choose to post uh, sexually provocative pictures of themselves in social media. And well, it starts from all over again because they start to sexualize their friends, their peers, and they also well have their input, let's say. Th that's an excellent point. So the the um, exposure to peers in the media cause the girls to internalize the messages and they self-sexualize, but then in doing so, they perpetuate it as well to their peers and to others. Okay, so uh, one might think, okay, you've uh, convinced me that sexualization exists indeed, uh, but well, after all, uh, is it such a big deal? Because, you know, it's just a body and the body is uh, beautiful and we should be happy about it and, uh, well, uh, what, what can be this, I don't know, consequences of sexualization? Because uh, when we talk about it, we, we, we tell about it as a, as a problem. So what, what kind of consequences can, can, it have, can it have? Well, in the task force report, we focused on, um, on several consequences. And some of the most important ones are mental health consequences. Mm -hmm. And there have been many studies done that support this. And uh, when girls are exposed to sexualizing messages, it puts them at risk for three things. Uh, first is depression mm -hmm. or depressed mood, so um, feeling bad, basically, after exposure. Uh, lowered self-esteem. Well, not surprising. Uh, not surprising when you think about it. That when you compare yourself with ideal, so it's hard to win. I exactly. So this is an impossible ideal, and um, that can lead to depressed mood. And, of course, uh, lower self-esteem. So girls begin to think less of themselves after uh, being exposed to these images. Uh, and then the third one is um, body dissatisfaction, body shame, and that can lead to eating disorders, um, especially when girls are exposed to this thin ideal of this idea that sexy beauty means you have to be very, very skinny. And it can be really devastating because those, those uh, disorders are really uh, serious, I would say. They are, and at their extreme, an eating disorder can lead to death, so it, it's very extreme. Now, we've, we, we also looked at some other um, consequences, potential consequences, uh, including some, uh, we'd say, cognitive effects, so ways that girls think. Um, and then there have been a number of interesting studies that have looked at something called self-objectification, which is like self-sexualization, where you come to think of, yourselves, uh, think of yourself for how you look rather than how, how you can act or what you do in the world. And girls who self-objectify more, and young women, girls and young women who self-objectify more, uh, are less able to do math problems. So the idea is that they're are so they? focused on, on how they look that they don't have enough mental resources left to focus on their math. Mm -hmm. So that has some really interesting implications for schools, mm -hmm. where you think if girls are really focused on their appearance and, and being sexy, they just maybe are not in the best state of mind for learning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And could you tell something about uh, potential consequences also for boys and, 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 and men? Because probably sexualization uh, well, puts uh, women into this standard, but it also takes men somehow. That's a, it's a great question. I think where boys and men are at risk when they take in these sexualizing images of women, they begin to have very narrow ideas about what women are, uh, basically that as objects and as sexual objects. So they're unable to relate to women uh, as partners, as friends, uh, as bosses uh, or peers, employees. So the narrow standard for men comes into play. And also, there have been studies that show that men are less satisfied with their own intimate romantic relationships mm -hmm. when they're exposed to because these. Because they don't have a partner to do it, probably. Uh, uh, well, uh, if they have a partner, uh, they find her less satisfying because she doesn't measure up to the images that they're seeing. 
in the sexualized media. Well, once again, if you compare it to, to, to the ideal, then it's hard to, hard to win. Yes. Well, okay, so the uh, situation looks like a serious one, definitely. So uh, what can we do to counteract, I would ask. Um, once again, in your report, you've mentioned three approaches. What can we do? It's uh, working through schools and formal education working through families and working directly with girls. So could you tell us uh, a little bit more about these approaches? Let's start with uh, working through schools and formal education. What can we do? Great. Well, schools can do a lot, actually. Um, one of the suggestions in the report was for schools to develop media literacy programs. So we know that these are very effective in helping kids to deconstruct messages about alcohol or drugs when they come through in the media. And we believe that they can be equally effective in helping uh, children to take a critical eye of the sexualizing messages that they see in the media. So these should be formally um, put into schools, formal programs, and could be very helpful. We had uh, mentioned uh, sexual harassment uh, previously too, and schools can and should take a very serious eye on sexual harassment and um, work to work. It happens all the time. It does happen all the time. Uh, it's very common and it's damaging to uh, kids and their ability to learn. So having programs that help educate kids about this. To create a better environment for them to <coughs> relate to each other truly, let's say. Exactly, mm -hmm. exactly. And then it's uh, working through families. What's, what's, what's then? <laughs> uh, so parents uh, ask often how, what can they do about this problem and they actually can do a lot. Uh, one thing that is recommended is uh, for parents to provide lots of other opportunities for their daughters that don't relate to appearance and sexuality and beauty uh, to help balance out the one-sided nature. Could, could, could you give just a, a straight example what exactly can be done? Sure. Because probably a lot of our viewers is very interested in what can they do with their daughters, let's say. Sure. So uh, athletics, uh, participation in sports and athletics seems to potentially be protective against these messages because the, the uh, sport uh, requires one to focus on your body and what it can do, the competent way of playing your sport. But is it also, isn't it also sexualization, kind of, when you focus too much on your body? Uh, so uh, focusing on, on how the body can achieve is pretty different than focusing on how the body can look. And also, if you are um, acting in your sport, uh, you are the uh, you're the agent. You're not the object. So okay. So sport as a as a tool, not as a tool, but sport as a goal itself. Sport as a goal itself. It lets you think about your body in a different way. You don't care about how you look. You just care okay. about kicking the goal or running fast okay. or, or or whatever. So uh, athletics is a very promising, um, a promising avenue. But there are many other things uh, that girls can do and parents can expose them to that help them think about themselves as whole human beings, very complicated whole human beings. Art, music, um, culture, uh, theater. Yes, exactly. Um, uh, writing, uh, uh, comedy. Uh, learning uh, uh, social services, volunteering, helping others, uh, active in your religion, a all these different ways where girls think about themselves as whole persons and not mm -hmm. just with this focus on so appearance. Of course, of course. Okay, so we know what to do in our families right now and the third one was uh, working directly with girls. So what can we do directly with them? Yeah, so one of the things that's really exciting is how um, energized girls can be around this issue. And if we give girls the tools and the support to speak out and to be activists, they really take that up. So from the young girls who convinced Seventeen magazine in the United States to stop photoshopping its models, um, to any number of other examples, girls really can take a role. Uh, publicly as activists, they can also, uh, with our encouragement, stop the peer-to-peer -peer sexualization. So uh, if we can help them to uh, see their friends and each other in these very much broader and more complicated ways, that helps to counteract the, the one-sided messages they get from the media. Great. And Aileen, I guess, uh, last but not least, uh, I, I guess that uh, 
such a pressure that we as a citizens can put on, uh, I don't know, advertisement companies, business, uh, government agencies and so on and so on. Uh, so that's the issue of uh, your cause association. We're association that tries to put this kind of pressure that we, we don't like this stuff and we don't want it on our streets and in our shops, let's say. So uh, as far as I know, this kind of associations play a, a major role in, in, in counteracting with sexualization in the US. So uh, how would you comment on that? Uh, is this kind of association and this kind of work uh, helpful? Can it do something? I, I definitely think so. And it's uh, fantastic that your cause association exists is working on this issue. There are some uh, groups, similar groups in the U.S. There's Campaign for a Commercial Free Childhood, for example, which has done a lot of work more broadly than just sexualization, uh, looking at trying to protect children from, from marketers and so forth. Um, but I think that uh, one, it's a message that uh, advertisers need to hear, that people are not interested in being bombarded with these messages and it's not really uh, about censorship per se but it's just about saying what we want to see and what we will respond to as uh, as citizens and as consumers it's about civil responsibility let's say civil responsibility yes and i think one of the places where people uh, in all walks of life connect with this is when they think about the girls in their lives uh, the young girls in their lives and do, you know, is this what you want for your daughter, your niece, your little sister, um, for her to aspire only to uh, a toned down version of a porn star? Or do you respect her mind and her heart and want much more for her? And I think most people uh, feel well, the latter way. That. Yes, yeah. and, and as a society, we'll be much better off too if we can celebrate and support the full range of girls' um, abilities and achievements for the future. And let's hope it, it will happen as soon as possible. Absolutely. Thank you very much for the conversation. Oh, thank you. Take care.